you are probably wondering if the Oculus Quest could replace your Steam VR PC VR headset, since now using third party applications, you can stream over Steam VR content to your Oculus Quest. Now, in this video, I'm not going to show you how to do it, but I've actually tried it for you and I'm going to show you how it looks in the VR headset and at the end of the video I'm going to let you know if I believe that the Oculus Quest could actually replace your PC VR headset when using those third-party solutions and all of this goodness is coming up. Hi and welcome to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang. If this is your first time here, if you're just as excited about VR and ARSME and if you appreciate independent reviews, then subscribe to this channel and click on the bell button so you don't miss anything. So finally, I've also tried it. I tried to stream Steam VR, PC VR content over to my Oculus Quest and the results you will actually see in this video. So which program did I use? First, I tried ALVR and with ALVR, it's a free software and it gives you lots of settings where you can set the different bit rates, the different qualities and so on and so forth. So that is definitely nice. However, then I tried a virtual desktop and for all of you who know my channel, you know that I'm actually a big fan of virtual desktop and I must say, yes, the developer has done it again. I got better results with virtual desktop and I even didn't have to set up anything. It simply just directly worked out of the box and probably all of the magic behind it, it simply made it work well. So that's why in this video, I'm showing you my results with virtual desktop. And now without further ado, let me show you how it looks like in the Oculus Quest when you're playing Steam VR content with virtual desktop. And here we are directly in the game. We are playing in death. Unfortunately, not yet on the Oculus Quest, but hopefully soon it's going to be there. And well, as you can tell, I can play in death without any problems. And the picture that you're seeing here, it is recorded on my Oculus Quest. So this is not the Steam VR video that you will see on your PC. And I did not record this on the PC. This is being recorded on the Oculus Quest. So all the artifacting that you see or that you don't see right now, that is exactly the picture that I see on the Oculus Quest. And as you can tell, it looks actually great. I didn't have any big problems with artifacting or anything and yeah i can simply play in death and it's nice and by the way if you're wondering hey what's this cable coming out of the quest what is sebastian doing here is he actually using some kind of uh, wired connection to make this happen no this cable actually is going to the 3.5 millimeters headphone jack and I'm using it to record audio because the internal way to record audio doesn't really work well. So this goes into a little recorder so that you can actually hear what I'm hearing as well. Yeah, I wanna tell you something very important here if you wanna to try to do this. So for sure, your Wi-Fi router should be able to do five gigahertz. Use the five gigahertz band. This is absolutely crucial. Now for my router, it can do five gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz. And I was under the impression that my Oculus Quest should automatically dial into the five gigahertz network, but actually it did not do so it's automatically dialed into the 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth and well that there was a big problem right and i couldn't make it connect to the 5 gigahertz so what i had to do on the router i had to deactivate the 2.4 gigahertz band and just then could i use this so this is a big yeah like kind of um, tip that i want to give you if you have really bad results, probably check if your Oculus Quest is actually dialed into the 5 GHz band and not the 2.4 one. And if it does not connect to the 5 GHz band, then deactivate the 2.4 GHz band on your router. 
And here again for in death, I really had no problems. Can throw the shot around, can can shoot the arrows, and as you could tell before, I was also using the shield to defend myself, and I didn't have any problems. And also, what the the latency is concerned, I didn't have any big problems. Like sometimes, like just before, sometimes the picture would freeze for a millisecond or so, but that didn't happen all too often. So, in death, yes. Let's go to the next game. And the next game that I wanted to try out, as you can tell here, is Beat Saber. Yes, I totally understand. Beat Saber is totally available on the Oculus Quest itself, but I want to use this to, to try out a game where you would need really fast reactions. And there, just there you saw it. I did not fail because I suck at Beat Saber. <laughs> I failed there because the picture froze for a millisecond and that totally threw me off. And as you will see a bit later in this stream here as well, or in this, in this recording actually, this does happen from time to time. And where it was okay in a game like In Death, here it will totally destroy the experience. So unfortunately I must tell you for games that need like super here, super fast reactions like Beat Saber, this doesn't really work very well streaming it over to your Oculus Quest. Yeah, so this is here again, you saw, this is definitely important and again because it uh, froze for, for a millisecond. I failed this level. And it's time for the next game. This is Doom VFR, which is one of my favorite first person shooters in VR. And does it work well? Streaming it over to the Oculus Quest, I can tell you, yes. It really works well. As you can tell here, this is exactly what you see in the Oculus Quest. And also the sound, the sound that you hear, I recorded, as I told you, directly from the 3.5mm audio headphone jack. So what you hear is exactly what you hear in the Quest as well. And yes, sound is great. Graphics looks great as well. So we do have some artifacting sometimes, but most of the time it just looks as good as what you see here. And as what the gameplay is concerned, I really didn't feel any big problem. So yes, there is a little latency, but this latency is totally acceptable. And in this game, if like for one millisecond, it will freeze and it did not really do that here right now. Yeah, but here it did, it did now. You, you won't have as big of a problem as like, for example, playing Beat Saber. So this worked exceptionally well, had a great time and being wireless, in Doom VFR really is an advantage and it's just so much fun. If you don't have it yet, get it. But now let's go to the next game. And now we're looking at Skyrim. Here are the blacks already. The blacks are really black, of course, because we're now looking at an OLED panel here. So if you came from an LCD panel, probably that will look amazing here. Skyrim in your oh, Oculus Quest. I understand probably uh, lots of you are interested in, in streaming SteamVR because of Skyrim, because you can't get Skyrim on the Oculus Quest itself. And you're wondering, is this a solution? Could you play Skyrim here on your Oculus Quest using ALVR or Virtual Desktop or VRich? And my answer is very clear. You yes, I'm you can do so. No. It works you amazingly you well. Camera? You don't have you any problems. And uh, yeah, huh? the problems that I've shown you before that you have these kind of uh, microsecond glitches where everything freezes. You have it here as well. But it's it's just not like destroying the game. You can totally play everything. And uh, well, the sound that you hear again, that's what you're also going to hear on the quest. It's just perfect. The video quality looks amazing. Looks just as good and as on the PC VR headsets, even better blacks if you're coming from an LCD headset. So yes, everything works well. And what I like that even the the button the buttons they are perfectly matching the a and b and grip button of the oculus touch so there is no mismatch as what the buttons are concerned or the controller is concerned 
so you can totally completely play Skyrim here with the virtual desktop or also with ALVR or VRidge, but I'm trying this here life. with virtual well, desktop because sound and video no quality right were simply amazing using virtual desktop. My I also want to talk about the tracking, the tracking so of the headset and the tracking of the controllers. And for both, the tracking is simply weapon. really amazing I'm and I was actually surprised how well that works. So as what the tracking is concerned, you don't have Mr. any problems at all. Coin? And well, it, it simply feels you're playing Steam VR on a PC VR headset if it wasn't for those straight. microseconds where the picture right. freezes or sometimes you have some artifacts. Yeah, and here I started a fight, which was not a smart thing to do. <laughs> but uh, anyways, uh, this is only to show you if Skyrim actually works. And yes, it does work really well. So you can play Skyrim and also Fallout 4 and all these games on your Oculus Quest. As you could tell, I got great results using virtual desktop streaming Steam VR PC content. So if you want to play games like Skyrim that are actually not in the Quest catalog, you can do so using these kind of solutions and especially virtual desktop. It really worked so well for me. And by the way, I'm in no way affiliated with virtual desktop. That's simply what I found out now using it. I still have to try VRidge and I'm also going to do that. But this video was now about my results with virtual desktop. Can it completely replace your PC VR headset? Well, not really. It is still a bit glitchy sometimes, as you could tell when I was playing Beat Saber. And for these games that require you to have like super fast reactions, I would not recommend it and well, you don't need to. You can simply play Beat Saber on your Quest itself. So yes, overall, it's a good solution, but does it completely rep replace a PC VR headset at this moment in time? I don't think so. But if you have the Quest and if you want to play games like Skyrim, you can now do so. And yes, I can give it the MRTV thumbs up. Well, that's it for this video. I really hope it was helpful for you. If yes, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have not yet subscribed to MRTV yet, why don't you do that now and click on the bell button so you don't miss any of my videos. That's it. And I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.